Two days before Fontaine was even accessible to Genshin players, two new characters were introduced to us with the promise that they would become playable in the patch after next. One of them was the most awaited Chief Justice Nouvellet, and the other was a mysterious and intimidating individual named Risley, who may have captured fans with his rougher, darker, somewhat goth aesthetic. With many players' fascination with his edgy-looking appearance, they may not have noticed that the introductory quote about him from Kalas cued us in on a very unique and interesting part of Fontaine society's world-building. And that was the fact that noble titles existed in the nation and could be granted as a result of merit. So far, it seems that Duke Risley, Lord Incognito of the Depths, is our only source of insight on this sort of meritocracy in Fontaine, being the only playable character with a noble title. But after playing the whole Archon quest, I think it can be argued that some other characters might be deserving of such an honor and recognition as well. And today, this video will investigate the viability of the Palaemormonia bestowing a noble title onto the ever-heroic, kind, intelligent, passionate, and empathetic president, leader, boss, and commander-in-chief of the Spina di Rosula, Navia. Yes, this is basically gonna be my nomination video for her, so I hope you could support the cause by liking this video and subscribing to the channel so Palaemormonia will be aware of Navia's widespread popularity and high approval rating. Well, kidding aside, please do check my other videos if you enjoy investigations into the societal lore of Genshin. With that out of the way, we first need to discuss the way noble titles are distributed in Fontaine and how Navia can possibly fit into its selection criteria. I know it seems obvious that Navia has done a lot for Fontaine, so giving her the title of Duchess is probably a good idea, but I still think it's worth going through the details of how the process works in the first place. From Kalas' quote about Risley, we can learn three important things about the distribution of noble titles. One is that it's bestowed by the Palaemormonia, meaning that it's possible to gain a title regardless of one's lineage. Two, that you're apparently allowed to refuse a title even if the government institution wishes to grant it to you. And three, that there are various titles that can be bestowed, potentially leading to differences in ranking, since in real life, the order goes from Baron, Viscount, Earl, Marquess, then Duke at the very top. This suspicion is then corroborated by a statement from one of the NPCs we can find surrounding the Steambird, a photographer named Antilla, who is accompanying a reporter named Huale, who is interviewing Monsieur Volant Nouvelle who was newly given a title. Antilla confirms that titles are bestowed onto distinguished honored citizens of Fontaine. She elaborates by saying that people who have received titles have carried out valiant deeds that aid in investigations, thus helping to preserve peace in Fontaine. And besides that, she confirms that different titles indicate a ranking with Duke indeed being the highest of such rankings. The reason why she's sitting alone, kinda looking like she's in a bad mood, is because Huale dragged her along for his interview of this Monsieur Nouvelle, but she thinks the story surrounding his title isn't very interesting and it'll just run into a dead end. Her sentiment does make sense considering all this guy has done is trip a thief with a crowbar, so yeah, apparently you can get a title for doing something rather basic. Of course, it did end up that the wallet this thief stole contained substantial proof that aided the Maison Gardinage in its attempt to catch a more high-profile fugitive. So I guess it did lead to some major breakthroughs, but the act in itself does not seem like much, and I think this funny little NPC anecdote is meant to kind of poke fun at the nobility system to some degree, while also providing us with more details to work with before Risley even got officially released. Now, of course, the case is far different for the Duke of the Fortress of Meripede himself, who must have done much more to earn his title, so much so that even Kalas, seemingly a skeptic of what these titles represent, came to acknowledge the credibility Risley exuded as he carried his title. 
However, if you are doubtful of his merits like Chloran was, even going so far as to ask if he had bought his title, although of course she was just joking, then here's Wisely's response to you while reading important documents as he goes along. So he says, Now let me see. Excellent management, leading tax contributor, specially granted this title. Well, what do you know? Good guess that's pretty much what happened after all. So yes, he did buy his title with his competence and charisma. Interestingly, the main reason for him gaining his title is probably due to his purportedly excellent management, which seems to be slightly different from what Antilla cited, which is that title bearers normally aid in investigations. I think this could mean that various kinds of peacekeeping practices are appreciated by the Palaimermonia aside from case solving, or it could have been the case that his overthrowing of the former administrator counted enough as a sort of quote-unquote investigation into corruption within the fortress of Meripede. As for the part where he stated that his title was specially granted, this seems to hint at Nouvellette being the one to really insist that Risley be deemed a duke based on his voice line. This doesn't really seem unusual until you think about the effort that Nouvellette really put into justifying Risley's receipt of the title, which I personally believe hints at the idea that even the Udex can't seem to make this decision unilaterally, or else he would have had a much easier time just giving the titles to whoever he wants. The description of Risley's title being specially granted may also hint at the rarity of Nouvellette strongly favoring a candidate during the deliberation process, or the rarity of Nouvellette being directly involved in deliberations at all. Although, do take this interpretation with a grain of salt, as it comes purely from inference and guesswork. Personally, I do think there's a selection committee that does the bulk of the work when it comes to granting titles on a typical basis, especially if it's for shallow things like tripping a thief with a crowbar. Another thing about Risley's Duke title is that it's totally not tied with any job description. I think people are sometimes under the impression that every single Fortress of Meropede administrator is called the Duke, but his character stories don't refer to the previous admin using the term Duke, and in his vision story, Risley seemed to have been serving as the admin already before Nouvellette officially bestowed the title onto him, meaning that these two things are totally unconnected. In fact, I think he must have spent some time as an admin before Nouvellet could have even compiled his credentials to the point of justifying his reception of the Duke title. This implies that being in a certain position doesn't automatically make you deserving of a title, and that individual merits are evaluated very thoroughly, at least when it comes to titles that are on the higher end of the ranking system. So we have all these details about noble titles in Fontaine from both Antilla and Wisely, but there's still something that we have no clue about, and that's how specific ranks are determined, like how the Palaimermonia decides whether to give someone the title of Baron, Earl, Duke, etc. I guess we can assume that they have very strict qualification criteria for each rank, with these criteria becoming progressively more stringent as the title becomes more prestigious or rarer. However, we don't have a copy of those rules, so it can be very difficult for us to assume what they are exactly. Thus, I think for now, what we can do is determine rank order by using characters as some sort of pegs. Like let's say a potential candidate for Duke or Duchess has to be as competent and dedicated as Risley at the very least. But then, the more you think about it, the weirder it gets too. Comparing Kalas, who received the title of Baron and rejected it, and Risley, who received the title of Duke, is quite complicated for me because as much as I genuinely love Risley as a character, I really do not understand why Kalas is ranked lower than him. For one, Kalas brought a sense of innovation by establishing his own nonprofit organization, the Spina di Rosula, thus catering to a marginalized group of the Fontaine population that was difficult for even the government to properly care for. By innovation, I mean it seems like nobody was really doing that before he did. 
He also aided in lots of investigations that have been pressing to Fontaine society, especially its low-income sector, by combating the growing synth trade. This aligns with Antilla's statement that people with noble titles usually aid in investigations. Meanwhile, Risley didn't really invent his job and he mostly follows the same system that was laid out long before he was even the admin. Of course, he did allow inmates to claim one free meal a day, and he's generally much more empathetic and at the same time systematic with his management, allowing him to address major problems more smoothly. But at the end of the day, the way credit coupons function and the hard work philosophy of the fortress came from a long time ago, so it's not like he completely revamped everything. He did lead the construction of the winglet and briefly halted the overflow of primordial seawater, but that was likely after he got his title already. Then again, it's hard to completely quantify their impacts on the sectors they each serve respectively, because we don't know what Poisson was like before Spina de Rosula came along, and we don't know what the fortress was like also before Risley took over, except that the former admin was kinda annoying and guards found it harder to do their job there. So it's overall hard to argue who has done more for their community or who is more indispensable, and because of that, the rankings do seem kinda arbitrary on the surface, with Risley being a duke and Kalas being an almost baron, seemingly just because one is playable and the other is dead. Regardless of the specific ranking though, Navia does seem to check many if not all of the boxes that would make one qualify for receiving a noble title in Fontaine. For one, her investigative prowess is practically unmatched with her major contribution to finding the perpetrator behind the mysterious disappearance of several young women in Fontaine, and she continued searching the ruins with the Traveler for any documentation about the prophecy regarding Fontaine's fate, with her nearly being dissolved on both accounts. God, if that's not dedication, then I don't know what is. Oh, and aside from those major instances, she was also able to track an individual who was responsible for indirectly harming Nouvellet in his story quest. Not gonna elaborate on that for the sake of you guys who aren't up to speed on the story quests yet. All of these instances point towards her talent for finding unique leads to solve very real on-the-ground problems that have been bothering Fontanians for years. So she at least deserves something more than the guy who tripped a thief with a crowbar. Additionally, she does also possess managerial prowess, aside from investigative talent, with her ability to command rescue operations in Poisson. As soon as the water levels rose, despite undergoing intense grief at that very moment, and not to mention the 4.3 version live stream did inform us that she'd be handling the rehabilitation of Poisson, which is such a major task that requires a strong will and an intricate knowledge of the people's needs and the necessary logistics to attend to those speedily. All of these incidents are well documented due to the Steambird's reports on them, making it easier for the Palaimermonia to build up her list of credentials and match them with the criteria for the noble title she can receive. And even without the selection committee getting to work, it is possible that Nouvellet will also step in to endorse her personally, although he will likely have an easier time doing so compared to the case with Risley because the latter was an ex-convict and his good deeds must have been difficult to systematically keep track of. While I did say that holding a certain position doesn't necessarily make one qualify for a noble title automatically, Navia's work as the president of Spina di Rosula is on par and could potentially exceed even that of her father's considering she has continued and closed the case he was trying to pursue. So it's not like she's going to receive a title based on her leadership position alone, but the actions she has carried out in the process of fulfilling her duties. Thus, if I were to recommend a title for her to obtain, I think she should be a baroness at the very least as a recognition of her merits which mirror that of her father's while he took up the position since they did help their people in very similar ways. 
Beyond that, I personally do think she can qualify for a title as high as Duchess considering her consistent involvement in the resolution of Fontaine's national crisis, her willingness to be thrust into incredibly dangerous situations, and her bravery when it comes to speaking up for her people I think can match Risley's boldness to stand up to the previous admin of the fortress. They both also share a passion for citizen welfare and exercise a large influence over their respective constituents because of their high levels of charisma and credibility. People trust them because they have done great work time and time again and listen to those in need. I think Pelé Mermonia owes her great compensation for her efforts as well due to the very major losses she incurred during the Archon quest, from the justice system failing to stand up for her father's innocence to the central government also not carrying out sufficient preventive measures for the rising levels of the primordial sea in Poisson. I believe it somewhat parallels Polymermonia possibly compensating Risley for its negligence in ensuring that prisoners were well taken care of by their previous administrator and probably other admins before that. Both characters truly represent the working class and the will to speak for and care for them in substantial ways with grand acts of heroism that are unmatched by your average Fontaine citizen. And these deeds aren't only confined to the Archon Quest since Risley and Navia have been serving their people substantially before we even met them and they will continue doing so even after Fontaine's crisis has been resolved. They're both examples of ideal leaders outside of the central government so I think it would be a great missed opportunity for the Palaimermonia to not recognize that Navia has substantially improved the quality of life in Poisson and possibly even Flovesander, similar to what Risley has done for the fortress of Meripede, meaning that she should likely receive a title as prestigious as his. However, Navia deserving a noble title doesn't mean that she really needs one. Although Risley was a chill guy who doesn't seemingly care for glory, the Duke title can help to build his credibility within the fortress, letting inmates understand that he and his rules are worthy of respect so his title alone can serve as a way to influence them to behave out of their own will. In Navia's case, she doesn't seem to be opposed to titles either as she calls herself the president, leader, boss, and commander-in-chief of the Spina di Rusula, but nonetheless, she still prefers to be called boss above all as it sounds powerful while still coming across as casual, so Poisson and Flovesander residents can address her with a term that makes her sound more approachable, at least that's what I think she's going for. It's also noteworthy that she doesn't seem to like being called Demoiselle, that much and I was thinking about the fact that she could already be an honored citizen but on a low rank similar to Monsieur Nouvelle. This is because Demoiselle comes from Mademoiselle which is the unmarried female counterpart of Monsieur. So it could be the case that Navia already has a noble title but she doesn't really like using it that much. Now if this is true, I think she would still deserve an upgrade to something higher like Baroness at the minimum as I suggested because I think she should be ranked much higher than a guy who tripped a thief with a crowbar. And if that's the case, this would be the first time we would encounter a title upgrade within Fontaine lore as far as I know, so that's really really cool isn't it? Nonetheless, considering how her father refused the title of Baron, and how she doesn't really prefer being called Demoiselle, there's still a chance that she might actually refuse any upgrade to her title should it be granted to her. Of course, we can't predict her decision 100% accurately when faced with this situation. She is different from her father after all, and we might not fully know her motivations for this one specific choice. On one hand, her bearing a noble title can improve the image of the Spina di Rosula, attracting more sponsors to bring them out of their phase of financial hardship and it might allow her to represent the glory of Poisson so that the rest of Fontaine will think highly of the community she represents. On the other hand, she might also refuse the title on grounds of her wanting to use the terms that define her own relationship to Poisson, terms like boss which people in and out of the organization probably feel comfortable addressing her with rather than using glorified terms 
from the Palaymormonia that might position her as more distant from the community she is a part of. She might also view the title as shallow, just like her own father did, who knows. It could go either way and her initial decision might still be subject to change based on convincing from fellow Spina di Rosula members, Poisson and Fleuve Sonder residents, or you know, maybe even someone like Clorand, who would never dare joke about her buying the title if she was ever granted one. So yes, while Navia does seem qualified enough for national recognition, it doesn't mean that it should be a source of validation for her efforts because I believe she really will take more pride in seeing the welfare of Poisson's citizens improve throughout time over gaining a flimsy little epithet. Still, I think it is the Palaymormonia's duty to acknowledge the major contributions of key citizens to the maintenance of peace and order in Fontaine society because this serves as the government's way of admitting that nation building is a collective effort which goes beyond the dictates of authority. Although noble titles may not mean much in and of themselves, they can unlock various opportunities for the people who hold them. I think the title of Duke has empowered Risley to continue making the necessary innovations to the fortress of Meripede systems and it could have also inspired inmates to work towards personal development seeing how a former convict was capable of earning such a high level of esteem. So with Navia's case, any title from Baroness to Countess to Duchess might give her a renewed sense of confidence in herself and will allow her to inspire those around her even more than she already has. But then again, maybe Boss does the same thing already. Granted, Hoyoverse might not even pursue this route when it comes to Navia's storytelling, so we might not even find out if she gets a title or not and what she decides to do with it, but I still think it's an interesting idea to think about so you can add it to your own Navia fanworks if you like. I mean, Noelle deserves to be a knight even if she isn't yet, so I'd argue Navia definitely deserves to be a duchess even if Palaymormonia is slacking off a bit with their deliberation process. I guess that's just the curse of being a geo claymore wielding girl, am I right? Anyway, with my bias aside, I hope you enjoyed this little breakdown of how noble titles work in Fontaine and this quick little summary of Navia's potential so that you'd pull for her despite her being Geo, which is honestly something I don't mind at all. What about you guys? What are your thoughts on Navia? Will you pull for her? And how much have you saved for her? If you like this pre-release take, I hope you could consider subscribing to my channel where I make lots of analysis videos like this one that are very character and society lore oriented. That's all for today and I'll see you in the next one.